And that figure announced by President Obama to develop energy sector in Africa is 33 billion U.S. dollars. Um, now, President John Mahama, uh, Dramani Mahama of Ghana, is among the African leaders attending the U.S.-Africa summit. He visited the Voice of America and spoke at length about the significance of this summit to his country and the importance of Ghana's, uh, Ghana's partnership with the United States in expanding energy production in the West African region. It means a lot to us, especially considering that Ghana is probably the only country, as, as, as far as I know, that is signing an agreement with the United States of America. And that is our second compact under the Millennium Challenge Corporation. Um, we're signing a compact for $498 million, you know, to be invested in Ghana's energy sector. And so that's the high point of the summit. But let me say that the United States of America has several initiatives with Africa, and under those initiatives, um, there is critical investment taking place in key sectors. One is Feed the Future, which aims to make um, Africa's uh, food security sustainable, and uh, Ghana is benefiting under Feed the Future. We have uh, the Ghana Commercial Agricultural Project, which is being funded by USAID and the World Bank. And uh, that project is trying to elevate small holder peasant farmers into medium scale commercial farmers so that they produce not only to feed their families but produce for the market. We also are benefiting from the Power Africa project. And actually, this new Millennium Challenge Compact is, has as its umbrella the Power Africa project. Um, with the kind of investment that is going to take place over the next five years, it's going to p position Ghana as the power hub of West Africa because we're going to be able to produce not only enough energy to meet our own demand, but we're going to have excess energy which we can sell through the West African power pool to our neighbors who are en energy deficient. Always the critical question is how are you going to achieve this? So you have a, a whole population that is not, um, have no, has no access to electricity, for example, and many people who wish to do business but that cannot do business because they have no power. How will you do this? Well, that's the secret of uh, uh, Ghana, not very, very little known. Ghana has one of the highest access to electricity in Africa. Um, as a result of our rural electrification program and the national electrification program, um, Ghan, almost 80% of Ghanaians have access to power. And so distribution of electricity is already quite widespread. And that is what has led to some of the challenges we have. Because we extended electricity across the country in a rapid manner, we're suffering problems of generation. Uh, the demand for power has grown because you go all over the country and people have access to power. They're using it for small and medium enterprises. They're using it for domestic you know, purposes, um, television sets, refrigerators, indeed, even air conditions. I saw wow. this idyllic. A picture, I mean, I don't know where it was, but there was this mud hat that had an air conditioner <laughs> stuck in it, you know. It was one of the most funny things yeah. I had seen. But demand for power in Ghana has been increasing at an average of between 8% and 10% a year. And so that affects the generation side. And so the key thing about this compact we're signing with the U.S. is to leverage the U.S.'s efficiency in energy production, you know, in Ghana. One, to sort out our generational problems. Two, to improve the transmission network. And three, to promote private sector participation in distribution of electricity to make it more efficient. Yes. And now Ghana is one of the oil producing countries that potentially uh, going to get uh, a lot of uh, uh, revenue from this. But you know, as usual in Africa, every time a country discovers oil, well, people panic because they look across the borders and see how much damage have, uh, has been done in those countries that have oil. What have you put in place to ensure that oil in Ghana does not turn into the cost that it has turned into in many other countries? I think that the basic guarantee to ensure that that uh, blessing of nature is, does not turn into a curse is the underlying democracy uh, that you need to underpin you know, a, a resource like that. Happily, Ghana discovered oil after we had established and consolidated our democracy. And so we have a vibrant media. Indeed, we have civil society organizations whose only duty is to watch oil and gas revenues and raise a red flag anytime they think there's something wrong. But aside from that is the overall legislation that we have. Um, we learned from Norway and other countries. We put in place the legislation. Parliament supervises, oversees all the decisions that are taken with regards to the revenue. And so I think um, it's going to be a blessing, not a curse.
Well, tomorrow on Africa 54, we'll bring you part two of my interview with uh, Ghanaian President John Dramani Mahama.